What's going on guys and welcome back to my Atlas Games Reviews, where we do things out of order all the time. Next up on the docket is Persona 4, or more specifically, the PlayStation Vita update Persona 4 Golden. It was nice to find out that I can play a decent game on my Vita, it's been a while since I've had a good reason to use it, so let's get this review started, but first let me uh, let me just blow off some of this dust. Uh, <sighs> Uh, just, uh, just, just a second. So, Persona 4 Golden has you, literally you, also literally you, Naokami, getting sent away to live with your uncle and his daughter after your parents are summoned away on a non-specific work thing. You would think transitioning from city life to the rural parts might be hard, until things get worse with the strange deaths of people with no clear indicator on how they died or how they ended up where they were afterwards all strung up and stuff. Eventually, you find yourself with the strange ability to morph your way through TVs where you encounter another world shrouded in fog, teeming with scary monsters, and you being able to combat them with the assistance of powerful beings known as Personas. So now, after finding ties with this strange other world and how they link to the real world murders, you and your new friends take it upon yourselves to form the investigation team and discover the mysteries behind the murders. So now you have to juggle between going to school, spending time with friends and family, working part-time jobs, exploring the secondary world inside TVs, and discover the hidden side of people that they don't like to show off in public, whilst battling their forms to free them from themselves, and dating. I mean, just like every high school, am I right? Again, I don't want to get too spoilery like last video, but all things considered, the base vanilla version of the game has been out since 2008, and Golden since 2012. So odds are, for the people that really care about the series, you've gone through the game like 59 times already. So I won't be as cautious about stuff I discuss, but in case there's another me out there getting ready to play this game for the first time, I won't ruin the whole game for you. Now, I mean, besides the whole mystery murder aspect going on upon your arrival, I had a lot of connections towards the fictitious town of Inaba, the main location of the game, a midway point of rural and city-based life, with an old shopping district getting dwarfed by this large, well-known company trying to step on its toes. It reminded me of my hometown, and I think that helped with my immersion of the world, you know, besides the deadly fog. But that aside, the game's story is actually quite interesting for the most part. Compared to Persona 5, which I had just finished roughly a week or so prior to starting Golden, I honestly think the story is better here, mostly in terms of its overarching plot. Both games do have some sort of end goal you're trying to achieve, but while with Golden, every action you do and every dungeon you partake in helps develop the main plot further, while Persona 5 mostly is just kind of mini arcs that only really help establish and develop characters. The main story itself is usually progressed further in intermission segments, and mostly the later ones at that. And while we are on the comparison topic, I think your base set of friends actually feel like friends in this game. Now that's not to say that you don't at least have good relationships in Persona 5, but they feel more like colleagues rather than friends, which the game tries to imply at all times that they are your friends. Persona 4's cast actually has the majority already be friends before the events of the game, and while sure when you start doing dungeons and saving people, they kind of do approach you kind of based on a moral code, I suppose, they all get time to develop in your group, and by the end, I felt like there was a better bond with the Persona 4 crew, and better romantic choices with a better variety of personalities for the girls. Rize's best girl fight me. And in terms of the murder you're trying to solve, 
It does make for an engaging story with plenty of twists as well as the underlying theme of being true to oneself despite its flaws one thinks it might have. It's an endearing story, one complemented well by its characters living there. And accompanying all that is a soundtrack that is pretty solid. I think Persona 5 had an overall better soundtrack, but my ears weren't disliking what I was hearing along my adventure. Probably my favorite song probably being Time to Make History, which is kind of funny because I'd rather not hear it in terms of it's the song that you get when you just do a normal battle. But enough of the positives because there are some flaws to go through and who boy are they prevalent. And unfortunately it has mostly to do with the part of the game I wanted to enjoy the most, the dungeon crawling. For starters, and I know it's not really the best thing to start with, but I can't quite remember where I heard or read this. If I remember where I found it, I'll make an annotation to it, but I remember hearing that Atlas has great level design. Well, each level is semi-randomly generated. Each floor that isn't set for something specific like a boss or a puzzle has its walkways and side rooms, treasures, and all this sort placed at random. It is similar in sort to what Mementos is from Persona 5 or what, I guess, Tartarus is from Persona 3, from what I'm aware of, for every single dungeon. I'm sorry, but that isn't good level design. The theme for each dungeon is varied, but it doesn't matter when each dungeon physically is explored the same way. The few variations to each one is how many puzzle floors the place has, and whether or not the set of stairs in its room has a secondary door next to it. And I say puzzle, and the biggest quotes I can put again, because these puzzles mostly only consist of finding an item and backtracking to use it on a door previously locked, or just finding the right door, period. Yay. And in terms of how you control, I really wish you controlled and moved the way he does in every other game he has been in ever. And everything else, he's fast, flexible, and limber, and hey look, double jumps! This you, though, goes from 0 to 60 in a split second, and he almost feels like he has he's running on some sort of ice physics. As well, enemies populate the dungeons, and if you can get behind them before they react, you can swing your sword to hit them and get advantage in battle. Well, that's a problem when use hit detection is awful. So many times I'd get right behind a shadow and swing away and just nope, and then all of a sudden the shadow turns on a dime, and then the enemy gets advantage. If I could say one positive thing that I welcomed, it's that if you die in this game, unlike Persona 5, where you restart from your last save, you just start at the same floor you were on. And, I mean, I know I forgot to mention it last video, but I thought if any game was going to have your main character die to cause a game over, I thought it would have been this one, but instead if your main character dies in this game in Persona 5, your battle's done. No way for your friends to cast a spell or shove an item in your mouth to wake you up. Your game just ends. Now when you finally get around to getting into the actual fighting and surviving part of battles, things get a little better, but this clearly shows it's the predecessor to Persona 5's battle system. There's no guns, nuclear, or psychokinetic damage, and the light and dark damage of Persona 5 are only insta-kill moves in Persona 4. So really, this game's down five different types. Worse still is that the lack of variety affects even more when you have the same amount of party members as Persona 5. That means that some of your friends have repeating elements with their personas, with Chie and Teddy, and Yosuke and Naoto having the same as well as Naoto and Yukiko. Now, normally that wouldn't be too much of a problem in most RPGs, since it could be a situation where like, oh hey, this area coming up has a lot of enemies weak to fire type moves. I can stack as many fire types as I can muster and have an easy time. But in this game's case, it has too much variety in enemy types that stacking multiple types could be extremely detrimental to your time in dungeons. 
Now when you finally get around to setting up your team and get into fights, you'll get pretty much everything you expected from an RPG. You pick through a list of moves for each character, attempting to hit enemies with the strongest move you got to eliminate your foes. You hit a shadow with its weakness, you'll trigger one more. The difference being is that Baton Pass doesn't exist. It's fine though, since I find that skills that can be randomly triggered by your team tend to happen often enough that I never really miss Baton Pass too much. While we are on that subject for a split second, social links in this game outside of your team are pointless. In Persona 5, everyone affects your skills one way or another, making it tough to decide who to pick to hang out with, but making every choice have some sort of impact. Here though, nothing happens with anyone other than your friends besides experience bonuses when combining Personas. Now, compared to Persona 5, getting new Personas is actually quite interesting. Granted, Persona 5 has a neat system too, but I think each game does it well in its own way. If you can finish a fight with an all-out attack, you could potentially trigger a shuffle time. In shuffle time, a random stack of cards pop in with random bonuses or potential negatives. There you'll find cards that give you more money, more experience, regenerating health and SP, or sometimes new personas. Your side goal with this is to try and clear all the cards in one session. If you can do that, your next battle will trigger a shuffle time regardless if there's an all-out attack or not. Now, by taking those personas to a place called the Velvet Room, you can combine cards in a variety of ways to create stronger personas. The system isn't fully the same as Persona 5, but granted, I've never really used most of those tools in Persona 5 anyways. Side note, it is kind of funny that I played Persona 5 first because it made a certain character seem fine until this inevitable reveal. Yet, if I played Persona 4 first, I definitely would have known something was up right from the get-go. I wonder if veterans kind of had that same thought. Finally, and this might just be the thing that almost ruined my experience with the game, I kept away from spoiling the main plot fairly well upon my first playthrough. However, upon dealing with the sequence in the hospital, you are given some dialogue options to go through. Now, Persona 5 had this as well, but it was literally an A and B option. Here though, you are given a select set of options to pick through, and if you mess up even one option, you get the bad end and the game is over. I unfortunately fell for that, and what made it worse was that I actually had picked the first option correctly. I found out that after the fact, when I looked up what I did wrong, there are six correct answers in a row where you have to pick within choices of around three or four options. If you were doing this based on presumptions, your odds of doing this right the first time is so low and there's so much dialogue to go through to get back to this part. After that happened to me, I let out the world's biggest sigh and just finished my session for that day because I was just so annoyed. Now, I know I've been bashing this game a lot and I want to just clarify. I did not hate the time I put into this game. My 60 plus hours were met with big smiles on my face the whole time I was interacting with the story and characters, save for that one part. It was also just met with a boring slog going through the dungeons that, for most of the game, I felt like I was just rushing through so I wouldn't have to deal with them anymore, where Persona 5 felt like the happy mix of a social simulator and an RPG. Persona 4 felt more like a straight social sim with some distractions with pretty backdrops. Even if I, Persona 5 hadn't been released yet and I had played this, I don't know how people could say this was the best games that's ever been played. There are way too many negatives for me to justify it being better than a lot of our other RPGs that have come out before it. Now. If this video somehow convinced you that this game shouldn't be bought or wasted time upon trying to go through it, I implore you to at the very least enjoy the story through the anime that they made for this. It is actually quite entertaining and while the characters themselves don't fight like in the game leaving it all to their personas, the plot remains the same and is a good way to enjoy the story subbed or dubbed, although you'll have to do the subbed version if you want to get the golden version of the anime. But anywho, thank you all so much for watching. If you like what you saw, maybe check out my Persona 5 review or Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE. Now, I did say finale last time, 
However, I am looking into obtaining at least Persona 3 sometime soon. Not sure when, but we'll get there. But until that happens, I'll have to leave it at Persona 4. So, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, I will see you all later.